Hey guys, Late Boy Scout here with some first shots on the Sentry Arms C308. Sent to me by Sentry for testing and review. I'm going to put a few rounds downrange through this thing, see what I think of it. I tried this gun out briefly at SHOT Show 2015. I really liked it there. So I was definitely interested in getting it in hand for a little extended testing. Put a few hundred rounds through it maybe, see how I like it. Today we're shooting some Aguila 762 by 51 This stuff has been kind of finicky in my Savage Model 3 or Savage 10T in 308. So we'll see how it does in this gun. Is it going to be finicky in this gun as well? I don't know. Eventually I'll put some better ammo through it, but I'm going to try to chew through this crap first. Let's see how it does. We got our paper bag guy at around 10 yards. And out there at a little less than 100 yards, we've got a silhouette steel as well. That thing is putting rounds exactly where I want them to go. That's amazing. This is like really accurate right out of the box. All right, let's see how it does on that steel out there. Hi. Hi, right. You seen where it's going? It looks high to me. Aim the bottom of the plate. All right. Dude. Now we got it. <laughs> it's rocking that plate, that's for sure. Magazines for this gun right now. It's uh, some of y'all's least favorite online gun store, cheaper than dirt, are now three dollars. You heard what? that right, three dollars for 20 rounds. And I hear that they are finicky whether they go with this gun or other versions of the G3 or the Set Me, other versions that are basically the same gun but uh, you know produced by different people. I hear that those magazines can be finicky with this gun or with again different varieties. But if you do a little bit of modification, a little bit of filing here and there, you can get them to work and insert and eject nice and reliably. Again, three bucks for those. Yeah, I ordered, I just ordered eight of them. Holy crap. So for $3 a piece, why the heck not? I may keep this gun, I may not keep this gun, but we'll see. Taking a look at the brass as it came out of that gun, you can see some fluting from that chamber on the brass. It dents the neck up though, you, or the uh, shoulder, you can see it. Yeah, I think I can see that one right there, some mm -hmm. dings right there. If you plan on reloading this brass, there's another dent right there, a little mm -hmm. scratch. If you plan on reloading your brass uh, for use in um, you know, some long range rifle or other precision gun, you may not want to put the nice brass through this gun. This is probably not for that. I'm not sure if, yeah, you might be able to, it doesn't look horrible. But, uh, you know what, I'm going to take some of this home and run it through my resizer and just see what it does. I'm happy with that. We'll yeah. collect some of this afterwards and hand it over to Doc Tack Dad and see how it does. Yeah, see what it does, see what it looks like. You should pop, check out a target up top on that hillside and just pop it. You see anything? See that big, see that, see that kind of flat rock up there? I think so. Up towards the top? Yeah. You're going to have to aim about 10 feet above it, but... I mean, take a knee and see if I can do that. Just for the heck of it. Okay. Just to watch the hit, the long range hit. Yeah. Holy cow, you were close. Did it go over the top? Yeah, just barely. Your uh, wind is just perfect. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, almost same place. Just to the left. Just to the 
Who? Yeah, just right. Just the right. To the right. You're walking it to the right. Ooh, just high left. Oh, I don't know. That, that could have been a hit. Action. I heard it. It slapped it. Hit. Totally. Hit. You better call it good right there. Yeah, you better stop. <laughs> Let's go back to the steel. Nice. That's hitting with some authority, dude. It is. Dude, that's a nice 500 yard knee shot right there, two in a row. Not too bad. Once you got dialed in. Yep. That's way the heck up there. That's got to be at least, well, I'd say at least 400 plus. I think you're probably right about that, I mean, given the elevation and everything. Yeah. It's probably 400 ish. Over the top. Low plate. There you are. Bam. And that bolt is stiff, 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 stiff. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. you're actually shooting that gun, the concussive force is not yeah. as noticeable as when you're on the side yeah, of the gun. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I come over here and I'm like, whoa. Boom. There's definitely some uh, some heat coming out of that sucker, man. Muzzle brake on it. Mm-hmm. It works well. It does. It it's a through. moderate brake, but it's more for muzzle. It's more muzzle compensation, I'm guessing. It's not a super moderate brake, I don't think. This gun, regardless of what role it may or may not feel well, is tons of fun to shoot. I'm finding the Century Arms 308, C308 to be just an awesome, really fun gun. The price is not too bad either. If you want a 308 battle rifle, again, magazines you can get into for three bucks today. The That's gun amazing. itself is not a whole lot more money. It's more than $3, but my, my point is, as a battle rifle for 308, it's extremely affordable. That's a lot of reason to consider this gun. Take a few last shots with it. Century Arms C308. These are just a few first rounds, first impressions of the gun. I'm going to be shooting this gun a lot more, or I intend to anyway. Once again, this is on loan from Century Arms for testing and evaluation. I'm really enjoying it so far, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm a late Boy Scout. Thanks for watching.